Anime Inception. If that is a concept that intrigues you, then go seek out this movie. If that concept does not intrigue you, or in fact turns you off, then unsubscribe from my channel and block me on all social media, because I honestly don't think we can be friends anymore. Alrighty, so I want to talk to you all about this film that I discovered, uh, well, technically late last year, called Paprika. And let me tell you, this thing was a visual treat. From start to finish, I was completely enthralled in this film, from its visuals to its story to just... The way it was structured was just in such a unique and utterly ba utterly captivating way, in such a way that I haven't seen such, well, Inception itself. Though going back to the earlier comparison I did, it would be more accurate to say Inception is a Western version of this movie, because judging by some of the things I saw in it, I have more than a little suspicion that Inception was very much inspired by this movie, but let's let's talk about that a bit later. Let me let's set the scene for you. Paprika is this film that it starts off with this scene of a small car driving in and then a full-sized adult female clown climbing out of it, you know, in a very impossible way that's only possible through the use of animation. And then we're introduced to this scene where a detective is saying that there is a traitor amongst this crowd and that this one particular person is the perpetrator they're looking for. And it rapidly gets surreal from there as he speaks not only to the clown who is the first character who comes onto screen, but he speaks to this mask on the back of a child's head that also talks to him. And then a magic trick is had where he is somehow transported from the crowd, crowd into the stage. And then we see a bunch of doppelgangers wearing his face run towards him and try to grab him, and then we see some of the most inventive jump cuts I've ever seen going from a forest scene to a train car to a hallway scene that rapidly just sort of kind of mm, just... It erodes away in a way that seems so utterly perfect for this dreamlike setting that would be impossible in real life, and it is then that we're introduced to the main plot device of this story. We're introduced to the device known as the Mini-D. This device, as explained to us, allows people to enter the dreams of another while they are sleeping, and it supposedly is used for psychology and psychological therapy is what its use is to be, but... Unfortunately, as it turns out, someone has been using it to enter the dreams of others in order to commit dream terrorism, basically. And it is up to a cast of characters, including the titular Paprika, a redhead who explores other people's dreams that seemingly only exists in the dream world, to try and figure out who is the perpetrator of this. So the movie starts off you know, with the dream sequence with the detective, but then it goes into introduce some of the other secondary characters. We have this genius uh, large man, we have the very small gremlin-like man, and we have the, of course, aforementioned and detective, and we also get introduced to this wheelchair-bound man and his sort of second-in-command bodyguard. It's never really explained, and just so you all know, I'm not Japanese, I'm already bad enough with names as it is. I'm not going to attempt to butcher these people's names. I'm just going to call them by what their role in the movie is. But anyways, we're introduced to this cast of characters, and it's just... We have... Basically, it's divided into two parts. The part which takes place in the real world, quote-unquote, where we see these characters bounce off of each other. We have the detective who is going through therapy and has some sort of, you know thing going on in his past that is messing with him quite obviously he's stuck on this one case where he can't figure out who the killer is we then get introduced to a the genius behind the mini dc who is this 
um, in the words of Gabriel Iglesias, very fluffy man, who is also this, like, genius with, like, the mentality of a child is how it's described. And we're also introduced to his... It's unsure if it's an assistant or a mentor figure, but this really squat, gremlin-looking motherfucker, and this really harsh, sort of, please-step-on-me scientist lady. And I'm sorry, but that's just the first thing that comes to my mind when I see her. Anyways, these four are trying to figure out what is going on with this terrorism, how someone has, you know where the person who has stolen some prototypes and what they're trying to accomplish by entering other people's dreams and basically driving them nuts. Because as we see, the little gremlin man it's just out of nowhere, and this is out of nowhere, goes on this rant. Like, just, just look at the text on the bottom. I'm just going to show you a bit of stills of his rant. This just, it's just this stream of conscious gibber, gibberish that, like, it just the first time it happens, it's it's enthralling. It's like what the hell is going on? And then you see this guy try, well, not try. He succeeds in jumping out of a window, and it's just like what the fuck just happened? And that's when we're introduced to the true stakes of this, because it turns out that someone went into his dreams and basically, you know, did an inception, and they put like this command in his subconscious that made him like basically go mad and try to commit suicide. And as the movie goes on, it's about, like, you know, just dreams and um, how they affect us in the real world. And it goes through that and it escalates to a rather absurd point that's just, I didn't expect it to get that bad and it gets real fucking weird in the end. But at the same time, the animation is done in such a way that it's like, holy shit, like... Paprika's story is, like, unintelligible. It's like, I understand the gist of it, but at the same time, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But it's, like, a good what the fuck. It's like, I don't understand what's going on, but I love it either way. But the biggest draw of this movie, I have to say, is the animation. The animation is excellent. In the real world, you know, it's just, it's done well. It's done okay. It's a lot smoother than most traditional, you know, anime series, but that's because this is a movie, so they could concentrate all that on 130 minutes as opposed to 12 to 24, 20 to 30 minute episodes. But when it goes to the dream sequences, oh god, the dream sequences. There are the transitions at the beginning, all of these jump cuts that are spliced in such a way that it feels like you're flowing from dream to dream. There are transformation sequences where one thing turns into another like when the little squat uh, elder scientist goes crazy and basically attempts to commit suicide there's this really just tremendously disquieting scene where there is a transformation that's just oh it's just creepy as shit and I love it I just I love watching this transformation but besides that, there's just, oh, this movie is just, this movie is, first and foremost, a feast for the eyes. If you are someone who, like I said, if you enjoyed Inception and its story about the, you know, interactions between dreams and reality and just like, you know, using dreams in order to influence reality, then this movie is, it falls a bit harder on the dream thing. It's like, the more the fantastical aspects of dreams, but if you like that about Inception, it's just, you'll like this movie. But if you are, like me, a fan of animation, especially of animation, if you're a fan of animation because of the things that it can do that are, quite frankly, basically impossible with, like, live action, then this movie is phenomenal. If you just, if you love good strange, bizarre animation that is executed at a level that's just incredible, Paprika, go watch it now. You can actually watch this on Am on Anime Strike. I almost said Amazon Strike. You can watch this on Anime Strike on Amazon. I know a lot of people don't like it, but if you have the free trials available, totally recommend you get it. And if you have either you already subscribed to Amazon Video or you're a member of Amazon Prime, 
then you know what? It's worth the, I believe it's five or six dollars it costs per month to get Anime Strike. It's worth the money just to see this film at least once. But yeah, that's my, um, just my opinion on Paprika. It's a really fucking good film. And if you're into anime or just good animation, go watch it. All right. If you like this video, like it. If you disliked it, well, there's a button for that too. Comment, subscribe, ring a bell, ring that bell, and I shall see you all later. And if you want to see more of the stuff I do, you can follow me on Twitter, which basically, it's just all of my videos go up on there every time I upload a video. It's like, hey, look, there's a video from my Let's Play. Oh, look, here's a, another one of these edited videos on my, you know, edited video channel. I also have a website, which I haven't uplo updated in quite a while, and I'm probably going to do that next. Don't worry about that. And, yeah. That's it for today. Also, I have a Patreon. If you think this video is worth some money, you know, go drop me, you know, a dollar a month or something. You know, I would really appreciate that. Alrighty. This is the first of my more edited videos. That's That was, of course, my New Year's resolution. Make videos that aren't absolute garbage. So, hopefully you like this video. Um, I'll see you all later. That's been Juan John John. Goodbye.